hi everyone this is gaurav um, i am doing this video where we'll be going over the regulatory cmc general description uh, there are many international national um, graduate student who did their masters in reg affairs they are looking for uh, some guidance on what actually regulatory cmc is how the process flow look like what a day to day activity look like what is the actual filing structured so in this video uh, we have a specialist with us and uh, she'll be helping us out in understanding the cmc structure and with this you can get more insight of what happen in regulatory cmc hello friends um thank you for listening to this video so in this um in these couple of slides i'm going to give you a general description of what is cmc uh, regulatory sections so when you file ind nda or any change control that affects um regulatory filings these are some few points or this is like a general description of what um is needed to be amended or what goes into module 3 and module 2 of the ectd structure which is a cmc so if you are looking to shift your career into regulatory uh, cmc then these slides would be really helpful to to give you an overview of what is regulatory cmc what are the sections what information um and you you can relate all these to your experiences uh, when you go for an interview if you uh, some of there are out who have experiences with some of the things that i'm going to talk about in my next slides and want to explore more then these slides would really help you and if you're looking for a mentor if you are really um do not understand or by yourself the deep into that then you can do a consultant hire a consultant who can go over um these sessions one by one with you and go into detail of each things that i'm going to cover in the next slides these are total my experience my industry experience these are the things that, that are not taught if even if you do a masters program in reg affairs or even if you do a diploma course or any other so these slides would be really helpful for anyone who is looking to make a career in reg cmc so moving on to so as we know that any regulatory filing has five modules module 1 is an administrative module then module 2 is an um all the summaries and then module 3 is basically which is your reg cmc which is your quality uh documentations module 4 is non clinical and module 5 is clinical so in the regulatory cmc field we are only worried about module 1 some of quality overall summary in module 2 and whole of module 3 is reg cmc so this is my slide so i have just covered few points module 1 is very illustrative and if you will go on the internet and if you will type fda ectd module 1 it will open you a list of documents that needs to go in but these are the general documents that every company would need to have and then it depends on company to company product to product what are the requirements you need to add on here so first is the forms definitely if you are filing an ind you have to do a 1571 form if you are filing an nda you have to do a 356h form then there are other establishment information form in which you provide the establishment information that is a manufacturer's details where your drug is made who is a drug substance manufacturer who is a sponsor of the study and all those information then fda form 3397 is needed for an nda but for an ind you also need 1572 which is a investigators form so these are some of the form requirements then you need to state in the cover letter that it's an nda or an ind if it's an ind which trial are you initiating when are you initiating what information have you provided is it an initial ind is it an amendment to an ind etc the point third which is a field copy certification is no more a requirement because now we have gone electronic so we submit via ectd but i have kept it here just for the informational purpose when we had to submit the paper copies then you needed the three um field copy certification then corresponding regarding meetings is a section where you submit if you had any previous communications with the fda whether it's a pre nda meeting pre ind meeting any other type c type a meetings you submit those um details in this section 
then if you have fast track designation or rolling review designation that you submit in correspondence regarding fast track or rolling review then you have to submit the labels so if it's an IND you will submit the label of the vial and the carton if it's secondary or primary packaging if it's vial if it's something else and then if it's an NDA then you will have to submit the the draft and the final labeling moving on to other things that you would need to submit if you're filing an NDA then you would need to include also the promotional materials and risk management plan how what is your strategy to to control the supply and any risk that ha that may happen post approval then this is the module 2 in this we are only worried about the quality overall summary and then you it is divided into drug substance overall summary and drug product overall summary i've also included the link here for the the e the ctd m4 um you can go on to this link and it will list you all the ctd structure and and documents needed moving on to module 3 so as we know that module 3 has drug substance and drug product and has a lot of details about your manufacturer nomenclature structure properties so this is a drug substance ectd mm -hmm. sections you will you have your nomenclature in which you describe what is your lab name laboratory code if you have use then uh, allotted to your drug if you have inn name in the structure you will list the physical and chemical structure you will list draw the 3d diagram in general properties you will just list what if solubility profile peh um, uh, if you have uh, pka if you have extinction coefficient depending on product to product if it's a small molecule if it's a biologic then what is your potency and other general pro biological activity in the general properties section manufacturers would list all your testing labs manufacturers then description of manufacturing process and process controls would list all your how you manufacture ds what are starting materials all the way to the upstream and downstream process and then how are you uh, controlling how are you controlling the impurities in the starting materials and how that rolls up into your processes your control of materials then control of critical steps is what are your critical steps that how are you ensuring control to your drug substances at what steps you take measures in process samples in process um measurements and that you would apply an acceptance criteria that this should be between this that's how you control your critical steps then process validation is generally not needed for an ind but definitely needed for an nda manufacturing process development is all in history about how you when you started the first clinical batch this is your process and as you develop into your um, development you always try to make um, efficient process so as you develop more batches you learn that you, your process needs to change this to be more efficient to decrease impurities to to tighten acceptance criteria so you describe all the all those experiments all those history that you do as you learn in your drug development into this section then elucidation of structure is all the experiments that shows that once you make that drug your final product is of the expected structure that you want it to be and then the impurities is one of the most important sections you have to prove that impurities is well below the ich limits and your your drug substance is pure enough to to dose a patient then you have specifications is your final release specifications one new manufacturer ds before it goes into full finish for drug product what what are your release tests and how do you ensure that the drug substance that you made is of appropriate quality that you can move forward to fill it into dp analytical procedures would list how are you testing those specifications all the tests that you perform on your ds samples and the validation data is basically to show that the analytical method that you're using is validated and gives you consistent results on every time you use that task test batch analysis is you show all all the batches release data in here justification of specification is again one of the most important section in that in this section you justify why your specifications are what you have chosen and the reference standard is basically 
it should be completely characterized and it should be the one that is no deviations no investigations comp appropriate quality meets all ipc meets all release tests have done all the characterization experiments on this lot and this is a lot that you use in analytical procedures container closure you list how in which container closure you're storing your drug substance and then stability sections is like you show that your drug substance is stable enough for a year or two years so you go up to a study of 24 months or 36 months depending on your retest of ts then you have drug product ECTD sections which is the description and composition of drug products so in this section you basically describe how much what is a description what is your drug final formulation is and describe the activity of each component for example if it's a simple ds dissolved in in water or a simple ds dissolved in lye or if it's some some saline solution so you would describe all the components that are in final drug product uh, in this section then components of drug product is a very detailed section so you list all the description you would list the container closure you would list the compatibility and all that stuff in here then manufacturers you would list the dp manufacturers and then you would list the process specifications analytical procedures as i went through in drug substance you will list all that for dp here batch analysis justification that's all the same thing that i covered for ts if you want to learn more about each section, what guidance is, and if you want to get more insight that how it differs if it's a small molecule, biologics, and other uh, advanced therapeutic medicinal spaces, you can definitely read the ICH quality guidances and other FDA guidances, or maybe hire a consultant to, to mentor you there. Um, then CMC submission process. I have laid out a general submission process here. I have worked now in three, four companies, and this is a generalized procedure that every company follows. It's like whenever you have a submission, you start to plan. You have to have a kickoff meeting with the cross-functional teams, letting them know who is the author of each section, what information needs to go in each section. Then there is an authoring. You draft the sections. Everybody reviews it. You have to do a content verification, which is like you seeing all the information uh, from the source documents you finalize it and you file it and you basically wait for approval and archiving so how does the authoring process um, content verification goes is every company uses two drafts to review so you draft two draft one you send it out for review you receive comments you resolve those comments you generate a draft two it again goes for higher level review then it is, you get finalizes no more comments it goes for content verification finalization and then you take approvals from each department this is I just took a picture to show you that how the ECTD structure works. So in M3, you can see body data, then you will have appendices, drug product, drug substance, and in each of those, it goes like this. So this is all. I know that this is not very um, deep into it, but this gives you a very nice overview of what is module two, what is module three, what is an ECTD structure, and what goes into regulatory CMC filings when you file an IND, ND, or any other global European filings. If you want to learn more about, you can reply to message to this video and, uh, and we can talk more. Thank you.